Well, here we are together, another Sunday hour. I'm going to take a little different approach to my time with you today. Normally, we do sort of an expositional study through Scripture. Today, I'm going to talk about um, some personal trials that I've been having, just in brief, but to set the stage for um, how I handle those things. We're told in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. As you know from our study recently through Philippians, we're being told to um, let our attitude be changed by Christ so that we can live the way that God would like us to live. But you know, in life and in circumstance, when things get particularly difficult, sometimes our faith gets challenged. I had three important issues that all came to bear about the same time for me. One involved one of my children and a big financial commitment that I had to cover out of the last bit of money that I had. Um, one of my um, children was also um, coming up for their trial date and um, got a particularly difficult and uncaring sentence, which concerned me as far as his attitude and how he would respond. Those were two things that I had been praying for just the opposite outcome than what I got. And then I had some personal issues that I was working through my own life, my own spiritual walk, and just not getting any answers, not getting any relief. And all of these things wore me out. When the news of my son's sentencing came to me, I just was heartbroken. And I, I wondered, what is it that I spend all the time and energy in prayer for if God is not going to listen, if events are simply going to work out the way that they're going to work out? What's the point? Why do I spend the time in Bible study? Why do I spend the time if my character is not going to change, if I'm not going to find the strength I need? Those things wear us down. And quite honestly, I had to return to some very bare facts first fact, I do believe there's a God in the universe, and I do believe that he's personal and that he touches our lives, and that I interact in spirit with him. I do believe that interaction in spirit is because part of his person is the Holy Spirit, and that's a personal connection with me, despite the vastness of the universe and how all-powerful God is. He touches my life personally. And I do believe there was a man, Jesus, who was not only tried and killed, but who absolutely rose from the dead. The historical evidence for the living Jesus and for his resurrection is unparalleled evidence. Evidence that doesn't require just mere faith. There's, in fact, tangible evidence that would speak to our conscious mind. The faith is necessary to put our trust in these things. The faith is necessary to, when we're disappointed, when we're hurt, and when things don't go our way, to come back and after we've had a minute to think, to breathe, to mourn, to say, Okay, Father, I'm here. Do with me whatever you will. And this is where I had to be the last few weeks. I had to actually work through these difficult circumstances, these 
areas where I wasn't receiving the answers I, I'd like to have received in prayer. And I had to come back to that place of simple faith where I say, okay, Father, here I am, send me. Don't think because I speak to you weekly from a platform on the radio that I don't deal with the same faith issues and struggles that you do. I do. I'm just as selfish, just as weak, just as broken as any human being out there. But praise God that I can overcome that through the renewing, the transformation of my mind, trusting what I know in God's word rather than what I see in the world around me, trusting my Father when all else fails, being renewed in the attitude of my mind so that I can have a good attitude even when circumstance would tell me otherwise. That's what we're doing here, just trying to grow stronger and work together to love God and to love one another in obedience to his word. Have a great Sunday.